Welcome to Canada's podcast. All right, there we go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Canada's podcast, the Atlantic Canada version. Really, really happy to uh, reconnect up with a friend who hung out with me and a few other people at Mount Allison University many, many years ago. And uh, Laura was always the, I'm going to say the, not the odd one out, the different one out because everybody (laughs) else was doing the basics, you know, science, engineering, business, but she chose fine arts as a, as a, uh, for all the right reasons, a passion of hers and so on. And uh, and she, she, uh, she just didn't stick to fine arts. She was really widespread and hung out with all of the other folks that were doing different, different uh, boring degrees. So uh, a little bit about Laura. Laura is a, as I say, she's been to Mount Allison University where she studied fire and arts and then uh, moved on to the Masters of Architecture, which she got at tons in Halifax. Spent 15 years doing a bit in the architecture industry and then uh, went on to teach fine art. Um, Her professional design career crossed film, fine art and design fields throughout Canada, Bermuda, the United States, Finland, and of course, Switzerland. And uh, we were just talking about a neat project that she potentially would be, be part of. And, and uh, so, you know, just a real breadth of, of projects that continue to be, uh, be uh, attracted to her because of, because of her talent, but also because of her passion. She's an inaugural member of the Nova Scotia Arts and Culture Partnership and awarded a number of RFP artwork installations in Halifax. And um, when I caught up with her on LinkedIn, she was focusing in on her uh, boutique vintage shop, which is Kingspear Curated Collections. And I want to talk a little bit more about that. So, so Laura, welcome to uh, Canada's podcast, the Atlantic Canada version. Are you an Atlantic Canadian born? I am indeed. I uh, was born in Dartmouth um, and uh, am thrilled to be resident back here and, and really just kind of feeling like a uh, uh, I'm 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 re reconnecting and and really loving it. Yeah, feel quite yeah. proud proud to be a Dartmouthian. Yeah, I remember there was a buddy of mine. He uh, with the there's always the the joke, you know, which one's better than Dartmouth or Halifax. And yeah. a buddy of mine, he uh, he he talked about. Uh, he says it costs an awful lot to get in, but boys, it's a bargain to get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, okay. So let's kind of talk about your um, your your entrepreneur career and what I'm what I'm interested in is where was the first aha moment that you said no I'm going to go at this on my own because you had a connection with uh, with other organizations but obviously there was some point where you said no I'm going to I'm going to go do this on my own can you talk a bit about that because this podcast is all about entrepreneurs sure um, and it's really interesting Rivers I I really don't have many opportunities to reflect on that and. Uh, it wasn't until you just asked this question that I was reminded as a, a 15 year old, um, I rented a concession stand at Banook Canoe Club okay. uh, and ran the canteen. Uh, so trial by fire, I learned very quickly uh, nice. what, what, what was required to, uh, you know, hustle, hustle and make a buck on a donut sale and a hot dog sale. Uh, yeah, that was a incredible experience actually. I mean, I, I, Truly, they, I don't know why, but they uh, they had faith that I could figure it out and there was no one to turn to. So I had to really learn the ropes. You did it. Well, you know, many kids had paper roots. Uh, I had paper root myself, the lemonade stands. Yep. Uh, I mean, yep. It's kind of in it. And they say that McDonald's is, you know, cr- creates the best employees on the planet because of uh, because of what the kids learn during that time period in business. So, uh, hmm. so absolutely. So it started off with the, with the, with the popsicle stand, with the yeah, yeah. Uh, hot dog stand, and uh, continued on from uh, from there. So so so, uh, where was the point that did you did you always do entrepreneurial endeavors during your journey, or was it uh, just at the time at the end of the, the fifteen years? Yeah, I I had a string. I mean, as evidenced by my sort of, uh, I I seem I seem to uh, uh, really. Uh, it's not a matter of getting bored, but there always seems to be, it's a little bit of that. Uh, what's the young person's uh, 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 fear of missing out? Uh, you know, yeah. there's, there's, there, there, there's this uh, FOMO. FOMO, that's it. So, yeah. uh, the, but the seduction of, of what the other, the other side is uh, experiencing and, and or just the intrigue. 
So right. uh, I've, I've always dabbled. So even when I was practicing architecture, well, I was in the Calouet, uh with a lovely firm, actually uh, Atlantic Canadians, Burdette Moulton. And uh, on the side, I was working at a bar uh, I, just to be sort of uh, the interaction with people, entrepreneurship, the, mm -hmm. the, the engagement and whether it's, you know, serving drinks or selling wares, there's something really uh, fundamental about those transactions. And I, I have to admit, and I, I heard myself say this yesterday, I absolutely hate selling, but yes. I love entrepreneurship. Yeah, and, that you know, well, it, they didn't understand what I meant. And I, I even in describing or explaining it, it was a little bit difficult to to uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, uh, delicate dance between selling and marketing and uh, entrepreneurship. And without creativity in the equation, it wouldn't hold any interest for me whatsoever. So I, I really I, I need to not just feel productive about the entrepreneurship, but also I want to Im imbue some degree of creativity. And I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a, a craft or a fine art, but rather just augment it or, or just how you present it. Uh, I, I'm, I've become extremely cynical and I don't know if it's because I'm nearly 60 or because the world has changed so much, but, the idea of marketing and the and the kind of uh, superficial, facile uh, deceptions of marketing uh, are so uh, they've become so sophisticated that product has become inconsequential, and it's all about yeah. the branding and the marketing. Yeah, and you uh, wouldn't like that. Oh. I, I, it, it offends me. It offends me deeply. And yes. it is contrary to my sustainable, ethical, moral uh, curated collections. And yeah. having, having said that, Rivers, though, I, I, it's, you kind of have to submit to some of those, those rallying cries or you don't survive. In order to keep the doors open, you have to play that dance without yeah. compromising your integrity, which is a very tough thing to do, and it's getting tougher. So how do you do it? Well, first of all, let's just talk about King's Pier, because I'm sure there's some social media components associated with uh, King's Pier. Can, can, you talk <laughs> about, can you talk about uh, King's Pier as a, as a business entity? And then let's talk about how you, how you run the operation. Sure. Uh, so King's Pier started uh, after uh, my hoarding of uh, vintage clothing became a problem. <laughs> and that's not entirely sure. I don't know what came first, my hoarding or my my, my business, but I, I working on some period uh, film and TV, I was very involved in the acquisition and um, uh, if not directly involved, I certainly was interested in, in period wardrobe for for production and, and, and content. So often I'd be tasked to either uh, create these products or find legitimate vintage product. Um, my, the, the King's Pier Curated Collection was effectively just a, 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 a way to merchant, merchandise all these goods because I, right. I understood the, the value of them, the slow fashion versus the, the, the um, what is considered fast fashion or fast production. I, I, I used to sell collectibles as well as fashion or clothing, but now I'm strictly textiles and footwear. Right. So, so it's about the art of creating cobbled shoes versus uh, uh, you know, fast, uh, um, high profit Taiwanese sneakers. I'm looking more at the Dax made in New Brunswick, turn of the century leather, Art artisanal, as 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 those would say, you know, it's a it really has to do with how a product is made and what materials were used to make that product, and the pride of those who make it. So that that whole uh, envelope of of what is that thing that you're buying from that merchant? Where did it come from? It's it, it, in the food industry, farm to fork, and all that, you yep. know, all that all that goodness that where as 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 a consumer, 
it's a conscientiousness of knowing or caring where that hot dog came from. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's the same thing with, with fashion and, and both of those industries uh, have a significant impact on our carbon footprint and rivers. Uh, you and I, we're, 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 we're on that sort of edge of the generation that is guilty of, of contributing in large measure mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the problems. And now it's, it's 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 great that the likes of you and I are saying, hey, listen, maybe we need to really re re reassess this situation and maybe maybe inform and and uh, inspire subsequent generations into well, something right. that's. You, you, you hear a lot about it with regards to food, no doubt about it, and clothing, yeah. and it's, it's just got the same same element of uh, connectivity with with the same type of story. So. And King Spear is a, is a, is an actual shop, though, if I if I remember correctly. It, it, it is a brick and mortar, and I'm so sorry. I'm sending a price to uh, my my um, colleague who's at the store. <laughs> uh, no so I have a, a shop right now at uh, Historic Properties, and yes. um, uh, it I started off in my barn in the valley, and uh, moved to Port Williams and collaborated with two other vendors and did some pop-ups, ultimately landed in Dartmouth on Portland Street, then uh, hopped over to or, uh, Argyle Street. I've danced around and it was really, I, I, I'm, I'm a very, uh, um, uh, a lot of guerrilla marketing, uh, real, real, real uh, slim, slim margins and ruthless, ruthless, um, like DIY shelving, the whole sort of, uh, but real it's part gorilla. of the attraction too, right? Well, imagine. you know, yeah, and, and you know, some of it uh, was uh, limited resources on every front, right. uh, but also an intent. I wanted to be true to my message that if right. I'm going to be selling um, sustainable, slow fashion, I'm not going to go buy, uh, you know, a, a full regalia of, of sh shiny new, um, cheaply made racket racked i'm going to build some so right was, right yeah it's, you're, you're, well, and again laurie you're uh, you're guilty of branding there when you do it by the way that's uh yeah. that's that's a branding <laughs> exercise <laughs> but well, i understand yeah. the authenticity is, is the key to what it is that you're branding and mm -hmm. uh you can't you can't get away from an emotional attachment to what it is that you're doing and that's what and that's what's probably one of your one of your reasons you are moving forward with your business because you people feel an emotional attachment to what it is that you're that you're bringing to the no, market. No question, no question. It really, I, the most fulfilling part for me is when a young person comes in and they're looking at a product, and they ask a question, and I won't shut up about you know yeah. the the you know the 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 the, the uh, significant history of a you know a pair of trousers. They right. didn't want to know all that, yeah. but then actually they do want to know all that. That's sure I, I, it's so thrilling when they like really, and then they start asking me more questions and then I offer more substance and it's like, you know, right down to, uh, you know, the, 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 the fiber content is critical. Uh, yeah. Where does silk come from? Where, I mean, how, what is rayon? What is that a natural fiber? All, all these things that really ultimately matter. We all wear clothes. No yes. one, no one escapes the need to wear something on their bodies because right. if, if for no other reason to protect us from the climate, whether, whether it's, it does not <laughs> to be about humility, but you know, for, uh, all, yeah. <laughs> That's what, for no other reason. I love that. So King Spear, it's a, uh, who, who is, who are you talking, you know, talking about a young person come in. Who are the type of people that, that you're attracting? I mean, I would presume you're getting a lot of the cruise industry that comes in out of just uh, here and there, but but who are you attracting besides them? Well, the, the cruise industry is a good one to, to, to cite because uh, one would think I'm on the waterfront, historic properties. Unless it has Halifax and Nova Scotia branded on it, they're not interested. So, uh, yeah, um, I've got a lot of dead stock from Windsor Ware, which of course no longer exists. So dead stock would just be product that was manufactured and never sold and held in a warehouse. So I bought a bunch of that and uh, I'm going to imprint it with Nova Scotia and Halifax. So I'm 
I'm, I'm catering to that. Th this is where I was saying that I have to kind of read the room and, and uh, right. accept, accept that the clientele, that's what they, I, I'm not, I, well, I sit on it. I can't, I can't bark about how great it is if it's going to sit there and, and be ill consumed, you know, it's, right I need on. to, I need to really sort of create a way to uh, feed that, that demand. So uh, the Banuk, the International Paddling Championships this past week, I had a booth there or a little kiosk. And I had a hundred of these uh, vintage windbreakers. So I emblazoned them with Canoe 22 and uh, sold sold a significant number. And it was nice. just as, as a consequence of adding these two things together is, you know, the brand and the, and the product. Yeah. So it, 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 it didn't, I didn't feel like I was, copping out or 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 selling out uh uh and they love the jackets That's uh, so yeah it, it really I, as you know uh particularly with pandemic agility is absolutely critical and um mm -hmm. it it really it, it, it that that i regard as part of uh kind of fulfilling my creativity is the agility of responding to the shifting market and uh yeah well there's, there's such a thing you, you've heard the word pivot before and people say oh, i hate uh, that word pivot and i'm yeah. like yeah well the national basketball association seems to use it just fine so i think we should just be pretty well happy that it's that it's a word we understand and we're going to stick with it so yeah that's the, no it, it uh, pivot is the most appropriate term and yeah we're tired of it because it means we've had to really sort of shift uh, abandon our former business plans and Mm -hmm. and intense and mm -hmm. and re reinvent ourselves and uh yeah that means 180 degrees or 270 degrees whatever it is you, you really have to pivot you have to yeah. you have to look in the other direction you do you yeah. do yeah i know i'm going through that now with with my business in the culinary world it's uh we we pivoted out of real life events into virtual and now of course with the pandemic i'll say slowing down um yeah especially. The virtual isn't as attractive anymore, so so I've had to uh, to look at other ways in which I can do that. So so I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. So so what about your journey? Uh, well, around the world, talk about that. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty intriguing. Bermuda, Switzerland. What's what's that all about? Yeah. Uh, so when I was studying architecture, I I became really uh, quite obsessed with a particular architect, Alvar Alto and uh, Elil Shevin, and whom both of whom are Finnish. So I uh, sent a, an application to the small firm in Tilimente in um, Northern uh, Finland, Tampere, and uh, uh, told them that I was gonna be in Finland in a few months and wondered if I could possibly come in for an interview and if they you know, would hire a intern. I had no set plans, but I really didn't want to say, yeah, can I come halfway across the world for an interview? So I had to sort of give them a convincing story. And uh, they wrote back and said, yeah, you know, sure. Uh, and I had to do a small work term. It was a co-op program at Tons. Right. So, uh, so I, I approached Dr. Savage. That would be Mike's father. Uh, uh, he was mayor of Dartmouth. And I said, I have an interview. He's my doctor, Finland. actually. Oh, was he? Yeah. Wonderful man. Yeah. Wonderful man. Yeah. I John. said, uh, I have John, exactly. And uh, I have an interview in Finland uh, for an intern architecture job. And it looks pretty promising. Uh, is there uh, any kind of uh, grant system or consulting that I, that I could possibly investigate while in Finland to help get, you know, flight over there? And, uh, he said, well, I'll tell you what, what, what why don't you investigate snow removal in uh, Helsinki? And I said, done. And so he, he gave me a hundred bucks or something from the city of Dartmouth slush fund of, you know, advancing students. And uh, it was all official, but, you know, it, it was, yeah. it was, you know, it was, it contributed to my, my, my adventure. Went to Hemming Homes. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. They were uh, a prefabricated home outfit in uh, Halifax, I guess. Okay. And I, uh, this Tilimente OU was a uh, uh, an element house, so they were prefabricating buildings for for Russia and uh, other Finnish, northern fin remote Finnish uh, areas. 
so I went to Hemming Homes. I said, listen, I'm, I'm, you know, a student. I'm going over here. I'm trying to get together scratch for a ticket. Uh, is there anything I can research for you with, with uh, uh, LVLs as laminated veneer lumber? And it was not available in Canada at the time, but it was being fabricated in Finland. I Got said, it. can I can I investigate some of this stuff for Hemming Homes? And they said, absolutely. So I I cobbled together a one-way ticket, landed with my portfolio, got the job, did the research, brought back a letter to Dr. Savage that uh, from, I went to Department of Planning and interviewed these guys. And um, That's so fun. I, I, well, I kid you not, he the, the letter actually said, you know, of course they used standard plows, but for sidewalks, use a shovel. So John framed framed the letter and and uh, uh, Hemming started uh, importing these LVLs and started doing prefabricated homes. Yeah, it was, it was great because it, it satisfied all of us and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, kind of got me. Beautiful. So yeah, all of my sort of travels and and work were real sort of grassroots, raw from the ground up sort of experiences, which is why I think I'm so equipped to pivot uh right. you know I, I um every experience was starting from the ground and in film and in in architecture i i built houses with brian mckay lyons teams and so i know how to i, I know how things get put together so i i, I love it it's, it's like the hot dog canteen experience learning from the trenches and uh you know there's no better way to learn wow well you brought uh you brought us circle uh full, full circle on the beginnings of it and then ended with the hot dogs what um uh what's next for for your career what do you got to uh well <laughs> here, obviously yeah and i um i the the you were talking about the culinary world going virtual and over the course of the last two years i built out a 1200 inventory online presence that is just standing still it's doing nothing mm. uh, as you say it's 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 just that that pivot has now sort of become obsolete so it's mm -hmm. you know <laughs> turning mm -hmm. turning once again and i i'm just really thrilled to be getting to a, a position where the i i've hired i've got three people now uh and it's it's holding its own which is Good. remarkable uh yeah i and i'm i'm really i don't I, I'm not able to say it's, you know, gaining a whole lot of profit, but it's, I, I'm employing people that are, who appear to be enjoying it immensely. Mm. I I love them. Uh, they're learning. I'm learning from them. They're they're taking on a lot of the the uh, social marketing, and we're you know moving together ahead on that. And yeah, it's it's it. They're young. They're 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 part of the the dynamic that is interested in in. Uh, ethical shopping and yes. all those things that um you know yeah cool so it's uh yeah no it's it's i'm i'm feeling really kind of i i don't have any ambitions of being some millionaire at the age of <laughs> I, hey listen as i say i'm nearly 60 uh, uh I, retirement is not part of my uh my uh yeah. my future i, I don't think it. so I'll just have to sort of, oh man <laughs> yeah but that's no, good uh, I, I'm, Really? It is good. Kind of, yeah. It is good. Well, Laura, this has been a a great conversation. You've taken us uh, to Finland with uh, with uh, with with the stop along the way with at the at um, Kingspear with the stop along the way of uh, the school, uh, all wrapped up in an entrepreneurial journey. And um, you know, I, I what I. What I love about this conversation, amongst many things, we're great to catch up with you again. Is the sense of uh, of calm you've got with regards to your journey, mm -hmm. and uh, I think after a while you just learn to go with the punches and figure out everything's going to work out. You know what, Rivers? I completely. And it's, I was talking to a friend. I ran into architect friend who was out in the West Coast now, and she was home for the summer, and we were remarking. Uh, you know. The, the the piss and vinegar you have as a kid and the stresses you endure as an adult and as a parent and as a this and a that. And it's like, you know what? Spill the milk, like just get over it and get on with it. You know, <laughs> uh, I, I, so many more important things. And I just, I, I think the pandemic in part helped 
restore that sense of mm. what's important is to get through this. Help whoever you can help. Get on with it and don't, we just can't afford to get into a frenzy and, 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 and absorb that stress. You got to bloody literally go smell the freaking roses, man. Yeah, right on. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I was going to say uh, part of my, um, my ending is what would you uh, recommend to somebody leaning in and go smell the roses? I think is, it's, it's, yeah. it's really what you're saying there. Yeah. So, I, I, the, well, the cliches all apply. It's like, do what makes you feel good. Like with respect yeah. to careers and all that, don't suffer fools, you know? Right. Um, yeah. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Well, Laura, it's been great taking this journey with you. Um, I'm just going to ask you to hold on a bit when I, when I stop the recording button so that we sure. can get all that stuff together. But thank you so much. This is uh, Laura McNutt. Laura and I have known each other for decades. Not that <laughs> many, but still decades. And it's been great yeah. to reconnect back with you, Laura. And um, we'll look forward to, to, to watching what's the next thing you're going to do. And she uh, she may be working on a film project that has a, an interesting twist to it. Um, but uh, I'll uh, let you just say, how do people find you? That's, I guess, the, the next thing. Obviously, on LinkedIn, Laura McNutt. What about your yep. uh, Kingspear? What, what's the website address for that? Uh, Kingspear.com. Yes, okay, gets, cool. uh, yeah, gets me to uh, all the sort of essential links. Love yep. it. Uh, Love it. Yeah, pretty easy to find. Pretty easy. Yeah, to find. you were. You were. LinkedIn, you responded. And uh, now Kingspear. So. Thanks very much, Laura. It's been great hanging with you again. You too. It's been really great to see you. Thanks, Rivers.